How's it going ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kaz and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to code external CSGO RCS together. Now if you don't know what RCS is, it stands for recoil control system and it's essentially a cheat that is going to counteract recoil for you. Now how does it work? Well in CSGO every time you shoot you experience aim punch, we call that recoil. Aim punch is essentially angles being added to your view angles that knock your view angles down every time you shoot. What we're going to do is we're going to perform a quick calculation, we're going to subtract the amount that it's being knocked down and we're we're going to rewrite our view angles to what they should be without shooting. I don't know if that makes sense, hopefully it does, but uh, I'm sure the code will make more sense. Now before we get into actually coding, I'd like to say I have a Discord server, so if you have any questions, any concerns, or you just want to hang out, come and join us, and uh, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed. With that out the way, let's get into it. We're going to begin by opening a Visual Studio project, where all good things start. We're going to open an empty project, I'm going to call it external RCS and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. All right, now that Visual Studio has been kind enough to open, the first thing we're gonna to have to do is come up to the top here and change this from debug to release. And we're gonna change it from x64 to x86. Now we're gonna to need to change some solution properties, so stick with me here. Go ahead and right click on your solution, go to properties, and change the C++ language standard to C++20. Make sure your configuration type is application.exe and go ahead and apply. Next, go to advanced and make sure your character set is set to the multi-byte character set. Apply and the last thing we're going to do is come over here to linker system and make sure you're using subsystem console. With that out the way, we can create our files. Now, the first file we're going to create is going to be our main file, and that's going to be a source file. This file is going to be where our cheat's going to run and all that fun stuff's going to happen. So let's make that. The next file we're going to create is going to be a header file. We're going to call it memory and it's going to hold our memory class. Now, if you don't know what memory class I'm talking about, it's basically just some wrappers around re read process memory and write process memory. I'll have a link in the description below. You're going to come to this repository. You're going to go to cheat you're going to go to memory.h and you're going to copy and paste all of this code. It's very difficult to fuck up, pretty easy. Um, so I hope you get this right. With that out the way, we can move on to main.cpp. And the first thing I'm going to do is include our memory class. Now we can go ahead and make our entry point. Now, as per usual, we're going to require some offsets. So I'm gonna create a namespace that's gonna hold our offsets. I'm just gonna call it offset. Now to get offsets, we're gonna use Haze Dumper. I'll have a link to it in the description. It does all the hard work for us. All we need to do is copy paste. So go ahead and follow up. The first offset we're gonna need is gonna be local player. Go ahead and search for it and copy paste this line. Next, we're gonna need client state. Next, client state view angles. Now the most important offset we're going to need is going to be m underscore aim punch angle. So we're going to go ahead and copy that and paste that right in. And the final offset, oh I don't know if you can hear that thunder. The final offset we're going to need is going to be shots fired. Here it is, go ahead and copy that and paste that right in. Now we can go into our entry point and uh, we can create our hack loop. Our hack loop is just going to be a simple infinite while loop. Now this is going to run a billion times per second, which is just unnecessary. So we're going to come up here and include the thread header. The thread header is going to allow us to sleep this loop like so. SCD this thread sleep for SCD chrono milliseconds, and we're going to sleep it for one millisecond. Now, before we continue, we're going to need to make a 2D vector structure and we can do that like so. It's just a simple struct called vector2 that holds a float x and a float y. Now, technically view angles and aim punch angle are vector3s, but CSGO has no role, there, there is no z, and therefore there's no point in using extra CPU cycles to read and write the z if we're not gonna use it. So we're just gonna be efficient and use a vector2. Anyway, before we get into actually reading and writing process memory, we need to initialize our memory class and get the address of client and engine. So let's do that. We can initialize our memory class like so. We're going to create an object called memory and we're just going to call the constructor and we're going to pass in csgo.exe. This is going to do a lot of fun stuff. It's going to open a handle and loop through things and it's uh, it, it does all the work for you. Next we're going to get the address of client and engine. We can get those like so. We're going to call memory.getModule address twice. The first time we're going to get client.dll and the second time we're going to get engine.dll. Now the last thing we're going to do before our hack loop is we're going to make an object to store our old aim punch. We can do that like so. Now this line here is very important, you need it, and it won't make any sense right now, but later on I'll explain why we need it. So moving on into our hack loop, the first thing we can do is get our local player, and you can do that like so. Local player is just going to be read process memory, we're going to read an, an unsigned int pointer, and the address we're going to read is going to be our client plus our local player offset. Now what we're going to do with local player is we're going to get the amount of shots fired. Shots fired is just a normal int, and the address is going to be local player plus shots fired. 
Now it's not hard to figure out, but shots fired holds the amount of shots you have fired. And we're going to use this to check whether or not we're shooting. Because there's no reason to be messing around with our view angles if we don't need to. So let's do that. So if shots fired and else. Now in this else statement, we are going to do something very special. We're basically going to reset our old punch. Obviously right now it is nothing, but in this else, we're going to set it to nothing. We can do that like so. Now once again, this probably isn't going to make much sense to you. Just bear with me, but just know that when we aren't shooting, we're going to be setting our old punch to zero, effectively resetting it. Anyway, moving on to our if shots fired block, we're going to get client state and then we're going to get our local player view angles. And we can do that like so. Client state is going to be a UN pointer off of engine plus our client state offset. And our view angles are going to be the DW client state view angles offset off of client state. Now, please note this is a vector two. And also please note that this is engine, not client. View angles are the angles in which we are looking. Now, after we've done this, we're going to go ahead and get our aim punch. We can do that like so. Aim punch is going to be local player plus the aim punch offset. And once again, we are reading a vector two. Now, as I explained earlier, aim punch occurs every single time you shoot. That is what we know as recoil. And aim punch gets added onto your view angles. Now, over here, what we're going to do is we're going to construct the view angles that we are going to write. Remember earlier, I said that we were going to make our own view angles. That's going to be minus the aim punch. And then we're going to override them so that we effectively override the recoil. We can do that like so. We're going to create an instance of our vector two class. We're going to call it new angles and we're going to set the X to view angles dot X plus old punch dot X minus aim punch dot X times two. Now this might look very confusing. Let me explain. Remember our view angles are where we are looking. Remember old punch is this thing up here. Our aim punch is how much our view is changing and why we're timesing by two is because that is actually the factor that valve servers have it set to. Now, once again, we're using old punch over here and you probably still don't understand what that's used for. The thing is old punch needs to be stored after every single iteration. Because if you just subtract aim punch times two, what's going to happen is you're just going to compensate recoil for the previous shot. You're not going to compensate recoil, recoil for all of your shots. Therefore, what we're doing is we're saving the previous one into this instance outside of the loop. And we'll do that later. Moving on, what we need to do is we need to do some error checking in order to not get banned. Now, in CSGO, our view angles, our pitch, the max it can go to is 89 up and negative 89 down. And if you write to anything out of that threshold, you're going to get banned very quickly. So we are going to make sure that that doesn't happen like so. So if our pitch is greater than 89, we're going to set it to 89. And if our pitch is smaller than negative 89, we're going to set it to negative 89. Now we need to do the same for the yaw. While our yaw is greater than 180, we're going to subtract 360 until it's smaller than 180. This is um, trig reduction because it's a circle. If you don't understand the math, don't worry, but you do need this. And finally, we're going to write our new angles into our current view angles, which is going to compensate the recoil. And we can do that like so. Memory.write, remember we are writing a vector to, to client state plus our view angles, and we are writing in new angles. These are the new angles that we've constructed minus the recoil. And last but not least, we need to update old punch because in the current state, we never do anything to old punch. It's constantly zero. So what we're going to do is every single iteration, we're going to set it to the aim punch that we had. We can do that like so. Old punch is equal to aim punch times two, just like we were doing it here, except we're setting old punch to it. This means every single iteration of the loop that we're firing, we're going to be updating old punch so that we can add it to our view angles and then subtract the new punch. And if we aren't shooting, we're going to just reset it back to zero. Now that should be our recoil control system complete. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and I'll catch you guys in game. Okay, my build succeeded. Let's launch CSGO. Okay, so we're in CSGO in my release folder. Let's go ahead and run external RCS. It runs all good. I have an AK and let's see what happens. And as you can see, it compensates for recoil. Now note it isn't perfect and that's because CSGO still has spread and you cannot avoid spread, not on official matchmaking servers. So as for recoil, it's being fully compensated, but spread cannot be. Either way, it works pretty well. So that just about wraps up my video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join my Discord server. We can have a chat and um, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, cheers.